Okay, so let us go back to the fundamental theorem of algebra. States that every non-constant single variable polynomial with complex coefficients has at least one complex root. Okay, so remember we are here. Okay, so this these polynomials, these polynomials here, they are in um, they are here. Okay. Okay, um, so this includes polynomials with real coefficients, since every real number is a complex number with an imaginary part equal to zero, okay? A real number is not, nothing but, so A and B are um, here, okay, wait a second. I want to write reals, okay? So if b is zero, then this is a, a, a pure a pure real number, okay? Okay, so this includes also the, the real numbers, okay? So by definition, the theorem states that the field of complex numbers is algebraically closed, okay? We will go back to, to this. Okay, so every single polynomial will have a zero here. Okay, in the field of the complex numbers. So the theorem is also stated as follows. Every non-zero single variable, degree n, polynomial, with complex coefficients, has, counted with multiplicity, exactly n roots. The equivalence of the two statements can be proven through the use of uh, successive um, polynomial division. I'm not going to get into, into this, okay? So, basically, here, any polynomial, degree n, uh, will have n roots, okay? So, that will be the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay. Now, let us say we have a polynomial f of x and this polynomial is in a ring of polynomials. Okay, so given this polynomial there will be a field k that will have k elements, right? That will have elements, okay? K, let us call K one element of big K. So here there will be the roots of this polynomial since K is this ring. Okay. Um, so the main idea to, to build this K involves um, quotient rings or division rings, okay? And we are going to construct this as we did with uh, the, um, the quotient groups, okay? Okay. So, let us say we have a ring and we have an ideal in the ring. So, if we forget multiplication, because the ring has addition and multiplication, right? So, let us forget uh, multiplication. So, I will be a subgroup of R, right? The, the additive group of R. Okay, and since this is um, a ring, uh, the group under addition will be a billion. Okay, so this subgroup here, I, will necessarily be normal. Okay, so the left cosets will be equal to the right cosets. Okay, so uh, this this I as a subgroup will be 
normal. So the, the quotient group Ri, we are going to define this as a map that will take us from the ring to the division. Okay? And this will be given by pi of a will be a plus i. So we can say, um, we can write this in additive notation as a plus i will be the same as b plus i. Um, of course, all this in the division group. Okay, if and only if a minus b is in the subgroup or the ideal. So this leads, leads us to a very important theorem. If i is an ideal in a commutative ring, so we have a commutative ring and we have here i as an ideal. So if i is an ideal in a commutative ring, then the additive abelian group, this one, can be made into a commutative ring in such a way that the mapping, the pi from r, so the, it would be from r to um, ri is a subjective ring homomorphism. Okay, and now we are able to give you this definition. Commutative ring is the quotient ring, okay, so the division ring of r module i, okay, or you can write r modulo i, okay, so this is the, the division ring or quotient ring, okay. So if i is an ideal in a commutative ring, then the additive abelian group, okay, can be made into a commutative ring, okay, where you're taking from the ring to the division ring, okay, and this is a subjective ring homomorphism. So pi will be a homomorphism, okay? So this commutative ring is called a division ring, okay? This is more or less like in the, the, the group division, okay? Now let me leave you here a quick um, corollary of the previous uh, theorem. So if i is an ideal, so let us pick i here, an ideal in a commutative ring R, there is a ring A and a homomorphism pi taken from R to A. So we have a homomorphism here from the ring R to the ring A, where this ideal, ideal I, will be the kernel of pi. I'm not going to leave the proof here, but if anyone needs the proof for this, is really easy. And after all this, we will be ready for the first isomorphism theorem.